Hi everyone, welcome to ZM Global Radio. My name is Martin Angel and I have James Phillips here from TZM Education, Simon Andrew from Action on Education and Lee Hamster from Educate HQ. And as you probably guessed by now, they will talk about education. I'd like to start this show uh, by a, fam a famous quote from my chemistry teacher in college. I am not here to explain anything to you. Just by hearing this, you can tell what kind of enthusiast she was when it came to teaching those poor teenage souls the basics of important science. And unfortunately, thanks to all sorts of budget cuts and obsolete ways, this is the picture of education today. As Sir, as Sir Ken Robinson points out, our education system has been created a long time ago in the age of industrial revolution. With all the socio-economic issues mankind is facing today, together with the exponential advancement in technology, this old education system is now not only obsolete, but even harmful. And obviously our failing capitalist profit-driven political system isn't helping. Education suffers from cutting corners and frustration of underpaid teachers. Colleges and universities are becoming dreadfully expensive, whilst creating loads of unemployed graduates with astronomical debt on their backs. Our guest today will try to present you some possible solutions to this problem, both immediate and long-term ones. So I'll pass the word to uh, Lee Hamster from Educator HQ. Please start, Lee. Yo, yeah, everyone, this is uh, Lee Hamster dot com presenting educatorhq.com education's problem prevent for a future as i say words are only useful if they're given meaning so my definition of education is the info tools network my definition of problem preventing is knowing what our needs are and how to meet them and my definition of future is systems that sustain life put those together and you have the info tools network on what our needs are and how to meet them for systems that sustain life Okay, with that being said, right now I'm scared shitless and the reason for that is we're undereducated. Undereducated with info, tools and networks to know what we need and how to meet those needs for systems that sustain life. We kind of skip education to problem prevent and go straight to looking for solutions that will give us a future, myself included. In fact, I must have spent on almost my entire life problem solving as opposed to problem preventing. And there's a massive difference between those two, which I've only just come to realise recently. It seems to me that problem solving is more geared towards getting rid of what we don't want, sort of allowing things to become problematic and then we try to get rid of those things by coming up with solutions. So the strategy of problem solving to me is a, prob is a problem in and of itself. Problem preventing, however, is more focused on what we do want. We want our needs met. Because if we don't, there's going to be problems. We can only problem prevent from education, so we all need education first, is what I'm saying. We need education as a first step for everything. It's what brings us all together, because needs are universal, not individual. We all have the same needs, so nobody can really be against education. To troll it would be anti-self-existence. That's the beauty of it, no, not because it's troll-proof, but because it can be used as a tool to make everyone's life better, to improve things continuously, to meet all our needs which gives us our future. So really what it boils down to in all these groups and organisations out there trying to do something about this world going to shit is education. Everything comes back to education. If we're educated to problem prevent for a future, the solutions find us. It's all about education. In other words, if we know what our needs are from education and have at least three ways of meeting those needs, we'll have a future. And I emphasize a future because there's no such thing as the future if we don't have systems that sustain life, meaning primary, secondary and last resorts to meet our needs. But yeah, the only thing we can do now is share everything we have. It's so important to share or learn all the info, tools and networks to meet our needs and how to meet those needs in at least three ways for a positive, optimistic, flourishing and sustainable future. The sooner we do that, the sooner the solutions will find us. So it's working together on education to problem prevent for a future. It's important to me that everyone gets this message, so if you could share this with everyone you know. For the sake of all life on this planet, not me. 
that's all I request. I hope it's clear to everyone I'm not here to sell any anything. I just want a world when everyone's needs are met. I hope I make some connections with this because I feel kind of lonely not hearing anything similar to what I talk about. Point me in the direction if there's anything... If, sorry. Point me in the direction if there is something or someone out there that's saying similar things to all this. I need friends, but yeah. Just got to say I'm really thankful to have the opportunity to share all this. More is on its way soon. I plan to release a full feature film on what's being said here and in, in the series I posted on YouTube. But until then, live and learn. This is LeeHamster.com presenting EducatorHQ.com. Education to problem prevent for a future. Get in touch with any info tools, networks, comments, ideas and questions. It's LeeHamster.com. Thanks for listening. A big shout out to everyone that's got me to where I am today. You know who you are. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Cheers. I am on. Well said, Lee. Thanks, Lee. Uh, so, um, yeah, who's, uh, who's next on the go? I, I can come in if you like. Okay, go for it, Simon. Great stuff. Um, I just wanted to say that um, what Lee was saying there um, is remarkably similar to, to what I do. I mean, we're going to have to, to, to get in touch with each other, Lee, after this. Um, info tools and network, I mean, that's, that's really, in a nutshell, exactly what I'm doing. Um, uh, and I, I agree that we're stuck cleaning up a mess that, that should never have been um, caused in the first place. I also agree with you that everything comes back to education. Um, I don't think I don't think the idea that education is that fundamental to us can really gel with us today because of what we we've seen of education. Um, but I think obviously that's our goal is to radic radically redefine what education is and, and then put it um, Put it, put it right at the, the basis of everything that we are. Um, so, uh, uh, I'm, I'm Simon from the Campaign Action on Education, um, and I founded Action on Education in order to share what I believe is a bolder, brighter vision for the future of childhood education, uh, that of a more personal, more enjoyable experience, and one in which we can go a long way to address both educational inequality and needless failure. Um, it is a, a bold vision, so it would take something to achieve it, um, but it can be realized incrementally, and given the extent to which education fails today, it's hard to argue that we shouldn't do it. Uh, few would argue that education is a success, a success story, would support the traditional view that schools do not fail. Indeed, some of the very best amongst us, uh, as uh, Martin mentioned, individuals such as Sir Ken Robinson, argue that schools fail more children than they serve. Um, in my opinion, schools fail because they are principally uh, structures of control rather than structures within which children can truly develop their capacities. Uh, indeed, one famous quote by Winston Churchill goes as follows. Schools have not necessarily much to do with education. They are mainly institutions of control where basic habits must be inculcated in the young. Education is quite different and has little place in school." End quote. Uh, that's a pretty miserable um, portrayal <laughs> to me. Um, and if we look at uh, Sir Ken Robinson's uh, quote that I, I keep at the top of my uh, website, he says, my view is that the traditional model has caused chaos in many people's lives. There are people who have benefited wonderfully from it, but most people have not, end quote. Uh, what he's describing here, too, is a hierarchy where the system is imposed upon all for the benefit of only a minority. This is elitism, and it is a reflection of wider, unjust hierarchies in our society. Uh, given that we can, uh, uh, sorry, given that, we can even ask if, that minority benefits. My personal view is that they, they can, that nobody can benefit from a divisive uh, social hierarchy because we're all being denied access to something which, is, which better reflects democratic and egalitarian ideals. Uh, so this is a simple choice to me. We choose either hierarchy and its tyranny, um, which always has worked very well for a few, or we choose democratizing structures which empower those who have been disempowered by tradition. 
um, we must lift, lift children out from under the weight of hierarchy and mould schools themselves to be more facilitative, more aligned to children's needs and less oppressive, less serving of elitism. Today, children must accept what they're given when they're given it by what they're led to believe is an unfailing authority. This places all power in the hands of those who control education. Now, we're fighting for a future whereupon, entering the school system, children will have open access to a vast educational landscape within which they are free to roam, to explore and to discover. They will have the tools to own and to contribute to the governance of their own education. They will know the level at which they are studying, territory explored and unexplored, and the challenge and challenges related to those already undertaken. If children in primary schools need access to GCSE, A-level, or even university-level maths, then they will no longer be left at the mercy of luck. They will simply be able to reach out and take it. Um, it is a sad fact, but today our schools offer no assurance whatsoever that even, uh, for example, a six-year-old child in maths, uh, sorry, a six-year-old child would have access to adequate maths. Um, so, uh, in a collage of analogies, I view the future of schooling as one where a school's curriculum is likened to a well-trodden pathway within a wider landscape, rather than the walls and ceiling of old. Or, I see education as a tree, uh, the leaves of which represent individual pieces of learning which children are free to simply pluck down. Um, so for me, creating uh, a vast, open and accessible educational landscape is the first part of tackling the educational problem. Um, but there's, there's another problem uh, here as well, and, it, and it's, um, it's more about context. Today, I don't think we even get the basics right. Um, we watch children go, going, go from being bright, inquisitive uh, creatures in early life full of hope for themselves and their education, and indeed full of love, full of love for life and those around them, to being despondent, rebellious teenagers, filled with anger and deriving their forward momentum from little more than the desire to escape. Um, on top of all of that, in order to protect the hierarchy from criticism, we allow children and their families to shoulder the blame for all of those failings. We don't even seem to care if children find just one personally valued pursuit in education. We know that strengths or passions in one subject can carry an education, and that many children are capable of building strong bonds with several subjects. Um, in addition, it's astonishing to me, but we show little or no interest in allowing children to look outwards at the world beyond schooling, to craft goals of their own to communicate upwards what it is they expect from their schools. If this campaign is successful, in the future it will be perhaps the school's first priority to ensure that children can develop a strong bond to at least one area of their development and that that bond is protect protected from all traditional encroachments. Throughout schooling then, children must be able to look outwards at the wider world, identify opportunities for fulfilment throughout life and construct goals, benefiting from the drive and empowerment associated with doing so. Such a facilitative, child-centered environment, as opposed to a top-down hierarchical one, will offer children and families the opportunity to embrace the opportunity of education and secure outcomes based more on passion and ability than economic background. Not only is this the basis for removing the shackles of traditional education, I believe this a highly personalized service will form the basis for renewed relationships between children and all those around them, uh, teachers included. Uh, when a child exists at the center of her or his education, it is much easier for the child and those around them to act in the child's best interests, and it is much easier for the child to recognize that that's what others are doing. Uh, I would just finish by saying that, that children's educational rights, which are laid down in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, 
um, paints a picture of education much like uh, the one that I've just described. Uh, the, those laws do not support the current hierarchical arrangement of schooling. Um, but it seems to me that, as always, laws are only words on paper, and they are ignored by those with the capacity to do so. I think this is a problem that, if we want to fix, it has to come from the ground up. It has to be something uh, akin to the 99% the movement, and it, it needs to come out of something like that. Thanks. Nice one, Simon. Okay, thanks, Simon. It's time uh, for James, T-Sandam Education, if he's ready. Yep, um, I, I wouldn't exactly call it um, ready necessarily. I've been extremely busy recently, so I haven't had much time to prepare my opening statement. I've um, been busy doing uh, other movement-orientated things, which, which I won't go into. Um, I think I went into them on my last program. And, and also, um, people who've listened to <coughs> my previous uh, my original broadcast for World ZM Radio will have a pretty good idea of what TZM Education is all about. But just to just to go through it again for those uh, new to this, um, the aims are uh, when I came to the movement, <coughs> I I thought to myself, w the the resource based economy, you know, it's a, a lovely idea and everything. But the thing that really spoke volumes to me is that for all of the design features that Jacques had put together and um, for all of the, uh, the the attributes of the design itself, it, the only way that design comes into actual physical reality and fruition is if the people's train of thought changes. A rather nice example of this that I rather like is nothing that you see that's human humanly created in our environment started without a train of thought, without a thought first, you know? Um, obviously, that collection of thought comes from um, a long lineage of uh, um, a knowledge database, if you will. But uh, and that's ultimately <clears throat> led us to this point where we're having this conversation and where we have a worldwide movement that's asking for this change and and why we see these protests around the world because the 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 knowledge database is starting to come together to realise that this system does not work anymore. Now, ultimately. That we're on a, a road now. The, the journey starts now. The transition is now. Um, and that transition is a transition of mind. It's a transition of education, uh, transition of consciousness. Whatever semantical labeling you want to give it, ultimately you will not see this the, the, the sort of world sustainable community that the world is now talking about unless you change the train of thought. And ultimately, unless you realize the root incentive mechanisms that you will need to put into operation if you are to see that it's it's one of those those um very important things that, it, that we need to bring into schools because at the moment kids are being taught about sustainability they are being taught about the environment it's not that it's it's um it's not in schools but of course the teachers aren't going to go against the cultural underlay, underlay, if you will. They're not going to um, tell them that, you know, if they want to see a sustainable environment, then they're going to need to change um, the economy in a very big way and perhaps get rid of uh, the root, you know, the root causes of the problems at ACA, the monetary system. Uh, they, you know, they're not really going to tell tell the kids that um, because it's a sort of self-perpetuating um, uh, loop of the status quo, so to speak, between parents, teachers, and really everybody out there, the self-appointed guardians, the status quo, which I know we're all very familiar with. Um, so it's kind of a, a, bit, a little difficult because a, a phrase I use sometimes is that um, education reflects culture and culture reflects education. So what do we change first? The answer is we need to do both. So it's a case of what the movement is doing on a higher order level, reaching the general populace. But also, and and this is the this coming back to what I originally stated is the goal of TZM education is to get into schools because ultimately, <coughs> children still um, have that open and inquisitive mind. They haven't had to go out and pay taxes and and basically slave away for the man just yet. They they're having at least in Western culture they're having their needs met. Um, and they're trying to sort of find their place in the world and understand it. So if we can go there and, and, uh, and basically say, if you really want a sustainable future for you and um, future generations, 
then we're going to have to, we're going to have to do something decidedly different for the reason that the problem is stated that we're not sustainable is the incentive mechanisms that we have now that is the reason and i can't believe that that gets sort of overshadowed really in the education thing it's like so why are we wasting all the planet's resources why aren't we sustainable well it's because of this model we currently have you know obviously but they never actually say that really explicitly which is a which is as i said understandable so We've got to come up from two directions, and for me, approaching um, the younger members of our society is much more important. They've got more time on their hands to do this. They're more open to the idea of um, sustainable values because it's been perpetuated in their schools from now a reasonably young age. Um, and this is the time for us to, uh, as members, um, in any way, shape or form, get into schools and start to perpetuate these values in interesting ways that are relevant to children. So uh, I, I'm very fortunate that I have um, an exhibition I can take into schools um, and use to open kids' minds to this direction. Um, but there are other ways of getting in there as well. You could, you could be a teacher, for example, um, and you could um, uh, you go into sixth form citizenship lessons and talk to talk to a large amount of people there, um, and the same for higher education as well. So th th there's uh, several different ideas at my site for how members can get involved, as well as um, make contributions towards validating the educational proposals put forward in a resource-based economy. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, if you can go to the site and check that out, that would be great. I highly recommend if there's one thing you check out on my site, check out Jacques Fresco's um, uh, chapter from The Best That Money Can't Buy on Education, the opening statement of which is, is rather telling. Um, it's basically the more intelligent our children are, uh, the more rich our, our society will, will basically become. It's, it's dependent on that. Um, other things I wanted to talk about, I mean, first of all, wonderful opening statements by, um, uh, by Liam and uh, Lee. The, uh, the, the, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. They're fantastic. Um, the sustaining life value is, is um, as put forward by John McMurtry, the life ground is incredibly important. It's what we, we have to um, gear things towards. And... Uh, and get people starting to be interested in, obviously. The interesting thing about now is the idea that people, to create a learning environment that's um, conducive to children's um, intrinsic motivation to learn things is not really happening. And um, it's obviously to do with the overarching culture, but the other thing is you, you get told that you have a choice in education, and that's just not true. Your choice is limited by your purchase power. There's no way I would send my kids to the schools they're going to at the moment, but I just don't have the money to send them anywhere else. So I find that I'm trying to fight fires when they come home and they say that school sucked. And I'm kind of like, OK, what sucked? Which subject was it? It was this one. OK, let me show you an interesting thing about that. And they're like, oh, it's not rubbish, is it? I'm like, no, it's just the way you're being taught it. <laughs> um, Anyway, so a problem in a new educational model based on um, the values put forward earlier, the idea would be would be to champion problem solving and critically criticizing um, uh, information and being able to think through these things um, uh, and uh, and it, inspiring children to want to learn because the task is rewarding rather than giving grades and goodies for it. And that's a very important thing to bring forward. I'd hope that a new educational um, system would be rewarding. And of course, it's building that learning environment like we were talking about earlier, which if you look at the circular cities, is hugely what they're about, that particular design um, model. But the idea of, this is quite an important point to raise as well, people often say, well, what's to stop someone getting control of, you know, and, and things going into to totalitarian control? The only reason there's totalitarian con control in the system is because the the populace is is been is not thinking critically about their leaders and not being and not being able to question them uh, because they're not given the thinking tools to do so in their educational um, paradigm. So that is one absolute benchmark of a resource-based economy. That if anyone starts talking out of their their backside about like oh, I think I should have all the food resources in this particular circular city they're just going to go what the hell are you talking about you know <laughs> and it's just not going to happen so 
Um, so yes, and just to finish, just a, a little note I wrote down here about the I couldn't I couldn't agree more about the paper proclamations of um, human rights and education for children and things, and and yet for all those paper proclamation proclamations. Things just seem to get wo get worse. The ultimate thing is, it doesn't matter how much nice rhetoric you spit out into the environment, until you change the physical reference in it, nothing's ever going to change. I mean, I would love to be nice, but in a, in a world based on money, sometimes I don't have that luxury. And ultimately, until we change the general consciousness and the thought process behind the things that's created these problems in the first place, we're never going to see any improvement anytime soon. So. And it all depends on how much work we put in now, guys. So um, everybody get out there and do your thing. Uh, and I think that's my closing, uh, opening remarks closed. Thanks, guys. Alan, oh, thanks for let, having me on, by the way. Cheers. Well said, Jim. OK, thanks a lot, James. Uh, I think we are sort of ready to uh, get to the second half of uh, our show today. Um, we should uh, have some questions ready. Uh, so if you guys uh, would like to answer a couple of those together, uh, I'll uh, I'll try to read the first one to see what uh, what uh, have you uh, what have you got to say about that? Okay. Cool. Yeah, the first one uh, is what immediate solutions or reforms would you implement to uh, the current education model? Uh, meant that uh, something you would do today. Um, talk to all members of the teaching fraternity about a resource based upon me. I actually think um, the the actual problem with that, uh, which I'll, I'll have to define uh, as being unmet needs, problems are unmet needs. I mean, to actually have an objective of changing things is I I, th I feel is going to be re uh, met with resistance. Uh, so the objective there being to change or reform whatever it is, then you know it's to me we're coming from experience with actually dealing with people with the topics that have been raised today about you know kind of trying to uh, change people or whatever it might be or teach people something is kind of it's kind of a problem and dangerous as as opposed to um, I don't know it's it, it can it concerns me anyway because it I've always been met with resistance when I've tried to change things I, I think that's the, the nature of, of the world you know it's it's change is difficult for people isn't it Yes, it's a, it is a, certainly a problem, but the, the, the main issue with, with change is that you're dealing with someone's belief systems. People will do some really mad shit for their belief systems. And ultimately, there's a good evolutionary reason behind that. If you need to survive in your environment and someone says, you know, the best hunting thing for you to do is A, you have to reckon with and, and project past experience into that new knowledge to ascertain whether that's really a very good idea. And ultimately, you know, it's going to be your yours and your uh, fellow humans survival that's on the line. So there's a good reason behind it, you know, um, in a to a certain extent. But if you look at the, the um, uh, human civilization's history, all we've ever done is change. And really, if you tell people that, and you, you use some examples like, you know, um, people being fed to, fed to lions in the Colosseum, and and the fact there didn't used to be any education, and I don't know, whatever. There's there's a you know, I'm sure you can imagine there's hundreds of examples. Then you can soon sort of get people to understand that some some seemingly fixed concepts that would be fixed forever can be changed. Like for instance, if you'd in Roman times in the bang smack in the middle of the Roman era said, you know what, I don't reckon I don't reckon these Romans are going to be around for forever, mate. You know, they would have been laughed at. And so to say that about you say you use that example pertaining to this system, and I find that helps. You know, people go, Well yeah, maybe it isn't going to be around forever and uh, the sorts of results you can get from saying like things, uh, talking about issues like technological unemployment, which you can do remarkably quickly in a, into a conversation if you find the route in, 
um, is one of those where it's just that there's no room for your belief system anymore given this new information because you can't wriggle out of it. It's um, and, and that's ultimately how we're going to bring the change about by argument by bringing forth points that that disrupt um, the you know the the flow of information in the brain and essentially get rid of that cognitive dissonance that exists. So I totally agree with Liam's point about unmet needs. Um, people you know have have needs that they're um, reinforced by in their environment, and if they've got if those needs aren't met, then frustration occurs and that's um that is unfortunate but but how this is why i, I i'm doing what i i'm doing is because ultimately we've got to go st cut straight to the chase and talk to people who are in the educational system because ultimately they're there because they probably want to inspire young minds um but they, they're not quite sure how i personally work in the school system not as a teach a teacher of a classroom per se but I am a drum teacher and, and I go into secondary schools and I talk to the teachers in the staff rooms and they're interested. You know, they don't think the education system's great themselves, but they're, they're being as coerced almost as much as the students are. It's a great big sort of um, hierarchical structure that starts, uh, starts with government and law and ends with, you know, a little five-year-old who gets told to shut up and sit down. <laughs> um, so it, it's it's kind of... You just have to plant seeds. There's no real e easy way of doing it. But ultimately, um, I'm, for instance, I'm, te I'm talking to the whole uh, teaching faculty at the secondary school I teach at uh, at some point in the not too distant future about a resource-based econ economy. And obviously, I'll lean heavily on the side of education. And if you get an opportunity like that, do it. Maybe we could even get a foot in the door talking to at a teacher's conference or something. You know, it's just you've just got to think creatively about how you can get your foot in the door and go for it, because ultimately, that's what being the light of change in the world means. And I think that's those are just some particular suggestions about how we might change uh, this particular educational paradigm into one that uh, is more sustainable and makes sense. I agree with a lot of that, um, Jim. Well said. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Anything add to that? Um, I, I mean, I, I, I agree that, um, you know, uh, change is difficult for people on, on the basis of uh, when, what, when survival is, is the, the frame of reference. You know, we're alive. Uh, and let's not mess with that. Um, and, yeah, I, I think any change really after that at the individual level is extremely difficult. Um, so, you know, what does it really take? It, it, yeah, it takes the, the unending efforts of people who... Um, who, who understand um, why change is so necessary. Um, but uh, it, it's just as you say, it's about um, planting seeds. And, you know, in the 34 years that I've been alive, I've never experienced a time that is more nurturing um, for those seeds than, than right now. Um, it's the world is, is just a buzz with this um, this belief in a in a, a different kind of future, um, you know. I think we're really lucky. We 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 just might be uh, an effective part of that. We we really might make uh, some kind of contribution. Yeah, it, you're right. That the times we live in at the moment, uh, everything uh, seems to be boiling, uh, isn't it? It's astonishing stuff. Really inspiring. Yeah, um, I just wanted to add one uh, little thing. I <laughs> I was thinking about it uh, recently. You know, we we seem to have um, we seem to have uh, too many uh, too many people doing professions in financial sector. For example, we've got so many so many businessmen and financial advisors. If we got uh, rid of half of those and re-educated them as teachers, so basically all the classes, uh, all the classes would have, uh, uh, let's say, two or three teachers instead of one. Uh, I think uh, that would uh, that would be a great step forward, because in my opinion, you know, um, 
even though that uh, opinions uh, aren't uh, the great thing, as <laughs> Jack Fresco says. Uh, yeah, I think that, um, uh, that, you know, in classes today, you see that there is uh, sometimes one teacher for 20 kids, and I don't think that's enough. I think that should change. That would be an immediate solution I would implement right now to increase number of teachers and to be extremely selective who the, uh, who the, ch the teacher will be. You know, to uh, to get uh, to get in people who really want to do teaching rather than just want to sit their time there and uh, wait for uh, the next paycheck. Well, the fact you've hit on something quite important there. The fact that teachers are even being paid. Um, in a monetary system is quite um, illuminating. I'm sure even even as a teenager, you know, you've got to sit there and you think this person, you get, you get the impression that they, they're, they're there to make a buck, you know, and go home. And basically, <coughs> basically, the, Ro Roxanne said this, this once in one of her speeches in the, People would would perhaps you know put themselves down to come and teach uh, a school in a resource based economy for a certain amount of time, a portion to how much they they can take before they reach saturation point. You know everybody has a saturation level, and once you once you reach it and you can't take any more, it's it's easy for people to be able to see that you don't really want to be there. For instance, I had this conversation with my daughter's primary school teacher last year, who was who was very good in this model. He was very good for what he does, and the kids really liked him. You know, he's fun and stuff. And we were having a conversation. He said, "You'd be a brilliant classroom teacher." The fact is that I went to I went to teachers' college, which taught me little or next to nothing for three years, and so I get to be in the classroom, and and you don't. He said, "To be perfectly honest, I I think you'd be really good." I do my six hours of teaching during a day and I keep screwing up the paperwork left, right and centre but because I'm such a good teacher they let me carry on and I was kind of, I thought that was a very interesting sort of a, a side point. But yeah, there's loads of people out there who could teach, who would teach, who would love to teach, um, you know, and there's teachers in the system who probably do like teaching but do they like doing it six hours every day, five days a week? No, probably not but that slack can be taken up by other people who want to get who want to get in there and help. I can tell you one thing: if I wasn't going out all day doing what I do, I'd love to teach in a classroom, but I, I don't have the qualifications to get in there. And um, as we know, credentialism is a problem as well. But uh, there. Yeah, very true. Uh, the credentials, you know, uh, that's another facet I'm experiencing myself. You know, uh, I'm. Um, I'm a PC technician. I've been into computers for a long time and uh, because I never had, uh, you know, everything I know was ma uh, mainly self-learned and, you know, I I kind of I kind of I'm in a constant process of education in my uh, myself further and further but I am still stuck at administration jobs, paperwork because even that I could prove uh, that I know things and I could do the job right away, everyone looks at credentials rather than checking your experience. Yeah, it's a shortcut. It, you know, it's, it's, it's for convenience again, isn't it? Like a, like a lot of, of the problems in the, the school structure, it's built around, uh, around convenience. It's also, I mean, we wanted to talk about the, um, the credentialism. It's also born out of the grades. It's born out of uh, just getting a piece of paper it's really, if you look at it, it's what the whole of our culture is about. It's about, um, you know, now, now, little doggy, sit down and you'll get a treat. That's basically what the whole thing is. It's why we, that's why we go to jobs we hate, you know, to basically get these imaginary, well, these basically like coupons, as Jacques calls them, um, you know, coupons to go and uh, go and buy stuff you don't need to make impressions on people you don't care about. It won't last. It's, it's a bit. It's what the whole system's based on, so we shouldn't be surprised that just waving a piece of paper as you walk in a room is enough for someone to say, oh, yeah, you really got what it takes. Because it's not based on on proving, you know, that you, anything, or showing in real enthusiasm for the task. I think it's slowly changing, but, but it's not anywhere near quick enough. Ultimately, I'd like to think a new educational paradigm would be involved on um, on application, on proof, and on incentive to 
to the project in hand. You know, um, I would love to work on a hydroponic food farm farming facility in a resource-based economy. I, I, there's so many things I would want to do in that environment. My head actually it feels like it's going to explode. So, um, <laughs> but uh, but in this system, it's it, we, kids are asked the question, you know, like, uh, what do you want to be when you're older? As if there was only one thing. It's it's crazy because that's what our system is based around. Like, if you're a human being with all of these wonderful talents and attributes and abilities. Yep, that's great. Now, what are you? Now, what one thing are you going to apply yourself to for the rest of your life? It's kind of like would, that doesn't make any sense considering what we're all capable of. But um, I'll stop going off on that tangent. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Jim. I mean, it's it's the subordinated mind that accepts um, that kind of uh, ex exogenously given or largely exogenously given uh, role. Um, to, 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 to fill a role that you, you've been compelled through education and then through uh, economic reality uh, to fill. Um, it's, I mean, who does it really serve? It doesn't serve the individual, and it doesn't serve those whose work that individual affects. Um, it's, it's just a mess from start to finish. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I believe so much in education. I, I, if we can um, create a facilitative environment in education um, that, that breaks down um, hierarchy, that empowers the individual, um, then as, as far as I can see, that translates into adult life as well. I can't imagine somebody having developed um, self-ownership skills or independence of mind um, really ever accepting um, uh, you know, being being put in put in their place, um, uh, and uh, you know, I have a, a that that touches on a, a wider economic theory that I have, and that is really that that our if our economy serves only to be the best thing that it can be, which I think is a legitimate starting point, then it really only follows that it can only be the best thing that it can be if each and every one of us are free enough. To be the best that we can be, and uh, it's pretty obvious that education plays an integral part in that. Um, to, today, the, uh, the 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 capitalist class will use free market arguments to argue that um, they should have more freedom, but freedom for them often means a lot more debt and bondage for the rest of us. Um, so, really, in effect, what we can do, and we can do it through education as well, is use the same free market arguments that um, those at the top of the, uh, the hierarchy use, and that is that actually we're better off the freer that we are. Um, so I, I see a future with a lot less, um, a lot less bondage and a lot less um, uh, uh, subordination. A lot more freedom and, and uh, roles for education that, that are supportive and that are, that, are, that are backed up by wider support structures, helping um, young people transition into the world of work and um, maybe even supporting, supporting them all the way through work if, if it's their choice to, uh, to make a switch, make a change, you know, to break up their working week and work, um, uh, you know, a part of their week, week here and a part of their week there. It's exactly what we need to encourage. Yeah, I just say as well. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually hearing um, a lot of a lot of needs here that aren't actually being uh, met. It's kind of strange. I'm actually taking most of what I talk about from um, a few courses I've been doing on nonviolent communication which um, really kind of, I don't know, it kind of brings about the solutions as opposed to go, going to find the solutions to our problems and, and what, I, what I was talking about before is, um, you know, uh, it's kind of, problem solving is kind of geared towards looking into what we, we don't want and trying to get rid of that. 
framing our objectives in getting rid of things which makes violence seem attractive, which sort of contributes to the problems that we've got. Um, and as I say, problems are unmet needs in my definition, and I'm hearing a lot of um, a lot of needs that are kind of. Uh, I, I'm not sure if we've been educated to understand what our needs are, uh, and it's not just food, uh, water, shelter, and you know the just all the survival kind of stuff. It's more to do with connection. Um, that's a massive need uh, that I think we all need to come to terms with. Um, uh, th there's, there's needs like meaning, there's needs of peace, uh, you know, freedom, independence, uh, acceptance, uh, compassion, love, you know, respect, uh, all these different... There's a need literacy that's um, not being expressed here and we've not managed to use education as a tool towards developing a language of needs um, that connect us to what actually keeps us here and and when when I hear that there's you know people that are not enjoying their life or whenever I hear you know people that are upset depressed and all these negative feelings or unsatisfied feelings that to me is kind of an expression of unmet needs and I, I think well just I, I don't want to plug like <laughs> all these different um, all these different things but I feel like I, I have to kind of thing because I'm sort of in the process of learning this language of, of uh, needs as opposed to a language of um, who's right and wrong and you know and, and kind of the black and white that we've got today with uh, good bad and you know all these different so, these these things that kind of separate us and judge us and it kind of denies people choice of um, well we're kind of denied choice as kids and we're, we're left e either submitting or rebelling and now I'm kind of going off on so many different tangents but I just want to say that that's one thing that I think is the the most effective tool anyway, um, which I'd recommend to to people is nonviolent communication. If you type that in on YouTube and just have a look um, at some of Marshall Rosenberg's uh, work with how to connect to to our needs. I mean, if we know what our needs are and how to connect to our needs, then I think that that's really what's going to give us a future as I said before and it's it's kind of that that's the only thing that I feel is going to um, kind of bring about the solutions we're looking for here I don't think there's any question about needs and and, and unmet needs are, are, um, are just enormously frustrating and, and undermining of, of just everything that we, we, we try to build in life. Um, I agree. I, I had a couple of points to make about that. Because uh, unmet needs can be frustrating, but ultimately frustration and emotional turmoil comes from a subjective expectation of reality. Um, uh, and what I mean by that is whenever something upsets you, it's because your expectations of the situation were ill-founded. Um, and wrong because what happened was was reality. What didn't happen didn't happen. Um, and the, and the point is 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 in that in that in that statement, when you get frustrated, you stop thinking clearly. And if you realise where that frustration comes from and realise that to solve the problem, you know, you actually have to put forward a potential solution to the problem, not just sort of um, run around saying you're terribly upset about it. It's that sort of education we need. That's why problem solving is so critical. Because if you want to meet those needs, you have to solve problems. And that's what we don't have through a prescribed education. The kids I teach are constantly looking to me going, well, what should I do next? And I'm always sitting there going, well, what do you think you should do next? And, they're, and they're, they're absolutely always... dependent on you, Jim. They're absolutely dependent. They've got nothing else that they can turn to. It's you or nothing. That's so true. Um, I, I mean, literally, you sit there and... But, but do you know what's best about this, though? Um, is that you, you say... 
and you say to them, um, so what do we do next? And they're, they're, initially, they look at fear and, and uh, panic of, I don't want to fail. Please don't, make, don't, don't give me the answer. If I fail, I'll be really bad, and that's terrible. And eventually, I usually just sit there and just go, well, whatever, I'm not, I'm not giving you the answer. And eventually, they'll go, well, I suppose I should slow down, or I should take out the hard bit, or I should look at this particular area of the problem, or I should do this, or maybe I could hit that. And, and they come up with all these wonderful things. I'm like, what's wrong with that? All right. Um. Well, nothing. Did you get a good result? Yeah. Well, what's the problem? What did you need me for? <laughs> and the floor is kind of like, oh, yeah. I suppose I didn't. I said, all you need to do is think about the problem. You know, running around being frustrated or or looking up to some authority figure for the answer isn't going to help you learn. It's just going to help you be dependent on someone else. But that's all they're taught. That's all they're taught. But that's fine, you know, I've, the amount of students that I've turned around, you know, drumming is a wonderful way to get people to think critically about how to approach something, because the reason you don't get something right in drumming isn't because the drumming's hard or because you're rubbish, it's because your method sucks, you know, and that's really, really all it boils down to. If you have a poor method or a poor approach to a problem, you're not going to find the solution, are you? You know, so... Yeah, I mean, to, to an extent, I mean... Uh... That it's also probably helped by the fact that you you're unlikely to teach thirty kids at a time. Yes, that is you've raised a very good point. That is hugely um, difficult thing to master. And of course, if you had an educational system set up to uh, cater for the different learning needs of different individuals, because obviously some people like to uh, be. Uh, like to read some people some people are looking learners some people are, t are sort of feeling learners some people are uh, you know th there's different ways of learning basically and our education system built on the ideas of the industrial revolution and the enlightenment isn't really based on that it's based on fitting cogs in a wheel it's like ta taylorism if people look that up is the basis that we don't want you to have too much knowledge about the uh, the different areas of production in the factory. What we prefer is to treat you like cogs in a machine, because then ultimately, if you only know about that very, very small, limited area, you'll be less likely to question management and question authority. And if exactly. that's, that's a perfect a perfect demonstration of why that hierarchy needs to be dismantled. <laughs> Yes, because now the fact is is that um, with, with automation, we don't even need the cogs in the wheel. You know, it's got to that stage now where we can sort of revert back to someone knowing and taking interest in the, the whole overarching um, system that's in place in that factory. He can know about everything in it. Um, and it doesn't matter whether he questions authority because ultimately everybody has um, freedom of access to the, the needs of life. That's do you, do you realise that? Do you realise that the the management class will resist that? Absolutely, but to be perfectly honest, when purchasing power runs out out there, and they they are, they are selling um, goods to essentially nobody, and inflation's going crazy because they keep on pumping more money into the system, it really doesn't matter what their opinion is. To be perfectly honest, reality is just going to undercut them. So really, what are we talking about here? We, what what do we want? Because I mean, I'm just hearing a lot of a lot of uh, time and energy focused on what we don't want, and it's kind of the whole money and the monetary system, and it's it, it kind of worries me to think that we're getting trying to get rid of all these different things. I, I I'm unsure of you know of what what it is we actually want, what kind of world we want and what are the tools to actually get there because we've all had the education to get to this level. It's not like we're uh, kind of, you know, just walk up one day and gone, oh, you know, meditated on the on the future or something and, and gone, oh, this is, this is the way it, it, it should be. We've all had this input from someone, you know, somewhere along the line. I think it's more about sharing... Um, Am I still very crackly? Uh, yeah, yes, you are, yes, you are. But um, I think you, yeah, you raise a good point. Lots of people can present a problem. That's what I'm saying. Lots of people can present a problem, but not many people have a solution. And, and it's almost you're entering into wanting to solve the problem. Uh, and so you enter into a conversation on that level because you want to solve it because you're fed up with being frustrated about it. Um, you have the answer, you have the solution because you've thought about it, but to be perfectly honest, if you don't want to look to it, and this is a large fraction of society, see the problem, 
want to moan about it a lot, don't have any solutions, and so most of what you hear out there is just noise and just interference. Um, and that's that's essentially what we're trying to do as a movement is come forward and say to people, you know all this stuff you've always been really pissed off about? Yeah, well, we have a solution. We have a solution set. You know, do you want to take a look at our, our solution set or not? And ultimately, we're reaching individuals here, so we're not you know, you don't always know where someone where someone's at or where they're coming from. I think for us, the reason we know that this idea makes sense is because the jigsaw puzzle came together at just the right time through just the right the right thing. If you if you hear people's different stories about how they come to this movement, they're all unique. They're all different because you don't really know how to reach people. But all, all you you know, all you can do is talk to each other, go out there, spread the message. I personally am passionate, just like I know um, you guys are about getting into the school system in one way or another um, and talking about these ideas because ultimately they are the ideas of, the, of future generations wh whether people in this current generation agree with them or not so it's it's a, it, that's what I'm saying I know it sounds really um, uh, sort of um, what's the word Did, uh, throwing throwing you know other people's opinions out the windows but ultimately your opinion doesn't matter technological un unemployment is a reality planned obsolescence is a reality you know um, scarcity of or, or is a re is a reality finite resources are a reality and that's it <laughs> you know what i mean it, 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 so eventually it's going to be inconsequential what management or anyone else thinks it's just a case of the harder we work this is what i think the harder we work on these ideas and the harder we we push these concepts then the easier it's going to be to transition. Uh, ultimately, the more people who get this train of thought, the easier it will be and the less painful it will be. And that's what's important to me. I think um, the need there that's being expressed is that we're, we're all here because, you know, some at least some of our needs are met here with what we're actually doing. And, I mean, the one for learning is probably the biggest one that we're, that connects us here in this, this meeting right now, actually. And... I just, I'm just looking. I'm trying to look at this from a perspective of, of, uh, of needs and and what we actually want. Um, and it's really, it's really um, difficult to get get out of this language that we've learnt um, of who's right, who's wrong, who's good, who's bad, who's normal, abnormal, all the rest of it. You know, like I said before, black and white. It's it's really hard to get out of that language and focus on what makes life more wonderful and what what actually makes things more fulfilling that's all i'm that's all i'm here to do that as i said before about you know i'm just here to meet everyone's needs there's not it, it's not all about okay well we just need to meet these needs and you know just chuck everything else out of the window um, and i'm not saying you know that um i'm not sort of down in the whole problem solving attitude which we've all been given from you know this education that we've received from the environment i'm not i'm not down in that at all i'm just saying if we could con if we could convert that energy into problem preventing as opposed to problem solving we don't have to let things get so bad where we actually try and look for solutions we actually look into what what needs aren't being met and then how to meet them at least three times over that's all i'm trying to trying to say i'm not doing this for my benefit I'm doing it for everyone else's benefit because the problem is that you know some our needs aren't being met and that's why we're seeing protests that's why we're seeing anger frustration until those needs are met that's when you're going to get rid of those those emotions and, and until you address those issues that's when people are actually going to open up to what their feelings are if, if we just kind of skip that and go to solutions just because well we're kind of being ag arrogant and saying oh yeah you're you know that's just your expectations that's just judging the person on like who who you know who they they actually are and we're just we're just kind of being arrogant to those people i've had experience where i've been speaking to people from information stalls about the zeitgeist movement and the venus project and it's just so hard to reach them on a level of you know problem solving as opposed to problem preventing which gets straight in there with you know what how they're feeling and what their needs are and and that's that's basically how we're gonna um make the connection how we're gonna find a future a future as i say is if we empathize with 
feelings and needs and it, that all this that I'm saying comes from the nonviolent communication that Marsha Rosenberg talks about and I really recommend that everyone look that up. I think I think that's an excellent point. I'd also maybe allude to problems in our, our language because I think we, we generally agree to say that when I talk about solutions, there's you know um, there's there's really no solutions. There's just a better way of approaching problems, or problem preventing, or problem solving, or, or whatever you want to call it. So I I couldn't agree more. You know, people's needs aren't being met. I'm just saying it's essentially what you're saying. I'm saying that yes, we need to um, prevent those needs, you know, from coming about, or meet those needs, or or whatever, you know, whichever way round you want to solve those problems, but essentially that is why you're seeing these protests around the world. It is the it is the world social organism, if you will, reacting to a cancer, which is what this system has produced. Um, and you're dealing with the, the tough thing that some people have been indoctrinated into the system. They've they've based their their emotions around it. They've based their beliefs around it. So you're you're trying to come in there and tell them that the whole thing needs a great big overhaul. It's quite difficult when that's the only thing that they've they've ever known. It was difficult for me, um, you know, coming to terms with it because I had all these opinions before I came to this and all these uh, this emotional baggage that I've had to let go of. So it's difficult for for you know, what we're trying to do is possibly one of the most difficult things. It is, in fact, the most difficult thing. It's and one of the most difficult transitions in human culture that's, that's ever been attempted. Um, and so it, it, we shouldn't underestimate that and how much hard work is going to have to go into um, into the sort of change that we require of, of it as a species. So, um, uh, but yeah, I couldn't agree more, Liam. It's an excellent point. One other thing I wanted to just briefly make as well, guys, is something to remember about the, the system at large is what it pertains to be. It doesn't pertain to be anything evil. In, in a sense, what it, some people who support attributes of this system support it because that's what they genuinely think it's going to get. They, they kind of mean well in a funny kind of way a lot of people like for instance the idea of social mobility you know if you work hard enough you can get up there the fact that that it just isn't really that isn't true because the reason that one percent own so much wealth is because of how the system's designed doesn't come into their lexicon doesn't come into their sort of frame of reference um so but the idea is that the system is supposed to have things like social mobility and and you're free to choose what job you want to do, even though actually, if you come from a poor background, your chances of, you know, of uh, that social mobility isn't there. But you see, it has these attributes built into it that want, it wants to be good. It's just not capable of doing it. It's kind of like building a car without any wheels. So, um, you know, it wants to get to the destination, but if you don't put wheels on it, it's not going anywhere. And essentially, um, I just wanted to raise that because um, it isn't a, an us versus them. It's just a case of this model doesn't work anymore. We need to try something different to reach these aims that we all have. Because you'd be hard pushed to find someone who doesn't have aims for a more peaceful, um, rational, sane world in which to live that isn't isn't sort of uh, um, uh, being coercive to them and and uh, you know and, and hierarchical and all those things. You know, nobody really wants to live in a world like that and it's time for us to realize that there's not 99 percent it's a hundred percent everybody's a product of this system and it's the system that needs to change just want to uh reinforce what i was saying about um problems my definition being uh unmet needs and i think until we understand what our needs are and how to meet those needs when we're provided with the tools from education to meet those needs. That's when we're actually going to see a future. That's all I really can say here. Yep, well put. I agree. It's um, it's a difficult problem though, isn't it? Because, well, our needs are kind of different. I mean, we we have uh, shared needs, and I think that we can rule out um. Uh, personal gain from uh, the exploitation of others, that would be a nice step forward. But even if we, we achieved that, we'd still have a, a situation where everyone is an individual, um, uh, everyone wants to be their fullest self, they don't want to be um, guided by any kind of uh, constraining force. 
um, and 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 whatever system it is that we create is got to be one um, that that for me at least it needs to be just absolutely respectful to to individuals um, and to to grant them their freedom and to trust that when given their freedom um, that they will actually choose to conduct their lives in an honourable way. Um, I don't think that's that's far fetched. I think a lot of that what we have is is and see is uh, our um, their, their systemic um, uh, uh, symptoms of 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 this problem, and, and indeed many of those who profit from and would defend to the death the the system that we have today. Um, uh, oh, um, I forgot what I was going to say. What was I talking about? Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Fear. That's it. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that a, a lot of of what we're what these symptoms are really just based based in fear. Um, and I think it's fear. It's fear that we uh, that we might not get to live as we want to live. And you know, it's be in part, it's because we've never had a chance to really live as we want to live. Um, uh, uh, so, so structures that we build and, and education is just so important. It needs to be a freeing uh, force um, that 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 um, rather than try to label um, our needs or box our needs. Uh, just really leave it up to people. I think they'll decide. It's like the the the, the rewards and punishments um, problem. I think that uh, in a functional and healthy education system, uh, children will find their own rewards. I don't think that uh, they need to be coerced into a different um, type of reward. I think just leaving them alone to enjoy their own uh, development is is the reward. Um, so uh, and and similarly, they will meet their own needs. Uh, I think I think it's it's all one and the same thing. You made um, an interesting point, Simon, about uh, all all needs being uh, different. I, I just wanted to um, add a little extra to that. That um, the the difference between uh, our needs are basically preferences to actually or strategies to actually meet meet needs um and i think there's it's kind of it's kind of difficult especially when it comes to um developing a language of of needs and how to meet those needs and at least three times over for air future as i as i talk about um when we, a, a language is so dominated in what's right what's wrong what's good bad and all these other things you know the, the kind of split just the, the there's like no kind of middle ground um i, I was just gonna say I, I agree with you um it's just you know uh you don't want to fall into the trap yourself of of speaking um with that sort of language um the the role of of uh the intelligent and the educators uh, amongst us is to um, is is to make information available to people and to do everything that we can to to make the connection between the individual and and the world of information strong. It's it's the problem that we fall into is when we start deciding what it is um, that that constitutes important information that these people should know um, because we're subjecting them. Um, um, uh, we're subordinating them, and you know we've really got to now get past that. Um, it would just be more of the same. Absolutely, yeah, couldn't agree more with that. Yeah, I'm just, I, I was just saying, it's, I was just trying to give you more of, um, you know, just a bit, a bit more with that, the whole, uh, all I needs a different, because uh, I, I actually think that all our needs are the same, and I mean, I don't. When I say I think it's it's not my opinion. It's actually we we all have the same needs. It's a universal thing, and yeah, just just want to say I'm 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 here to try and meet everyone's needs, and and that's the only thing that that 
we need education on I suppose is just understanding what our needs are and how to meet them and it doesn't and, and we shouldn't uh, really see words like shouldn't and don't and can't and won't and all those di- different kinds of words deny choice and that's that's where the submit uh, submission comes from or rebellion from this current education system I, I agree with that um, needs are defi- definable wants are um, reinforced and there are a lot of wants in our system that are not valid you might want to have a 15 bedroom mansion with every toilet with a gold plate of toilet, I would you know, say gold... wants are a poor expression of needs <laughs> Yes, yeah, I, I, a kind of a poor extra- expression, but everybody's reinforced to do something through environmental con- conditioning one way or another. Um, and, and that's what I'm saying, is that in our system... I, I, this, I don't think that excuses the systemic um, uh, imposition of, of, of ideas on, onto vulnerable young people, though. No, it might not, but it's what it's it's that's reality. That's what the system produces. That's why that's why it's the system that I disagree with, um, because it's what the system reinforces. You know, you need to tread on other people to get higher to up the ladder, and you know that's what the housing market's about. That's what you know having a car with your own personalised number plate is all about. I want a car with my own personalised number. Well, why do you want that? You want that because that's what you're reinforced to do in your culture. Um, so what, what, I, what I mean is, you know, and Peter says this, you can't have, um, a, you, it's, it's an illegitimate want to have a 15 bedroom mansion with, with gold plated toilet seats, a plane on the front lawn and 500 Ferraris. That's, that's, that is absolutely freedom. That's not freedom. Sure. Sure. That's, but those, uh, you can't link sort of that kind of materialism to, um, what what I'm worried you you might think are, are wants, um, but I, I would argue that they're they're basic needs. Um, the ability of of us to to not be imposed upon, to to take information from the world and to to um, deal with it in our own way and to develop in our own way to be individuals. That I mean, we we could look back and sort of um, backward engineer a, a life story and say, sure, you know, we had a lot of really similar needs but it wouldn't help the individual to have had some kind of structure imposed on him um, for the journey um, you know it's it's the, the very process of doing that which is which is the problem we've actually um, we've actually had a guest come in who's given us a list of a list of needs that's quite interesting uh, I don't know whether um, they, they want them to be read out or something, but they they look quite interesting. Yeah, I think I think you're right. There's there's needs and there's wants. Essentially, what w- w- the environment we're creating is to reinforce the sort of environment we would like to see to solve you know solve the problem of meeting needs, which Liam um, refers to. Uh, so yes, basically that's that's what we would like to reinforce in this model yes of course choice comes into it uh, freedom of choice individuality um and individual preference yes but it's all within a framework of a sustainable um a- economic model that's essentially what has to has to change because if you're not sustainable according to um nature and emergent and um uh, matching your resources matching your resource capability then you are by very definition not sustainable which is exactly what this world system and culture is all about at the moment and essentially that's what's going to have to change sure at the level of the economy you're right i mean that's a physical realm um but in the world of education it's a it's a purely um intellectual realm a, a psycho social psychological realm it's it's not um constrained by uh you know any physical reality other than the one that we impose on that structure um so so in education i mean we're free to be everything that our minds can be um it's 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 a different problem from the economic problem um uh so um yeah i mean i mean it's i i would i would not sort of bring an argument about the restraints that we face in the economy into sort of justifying a, a, a structured, um, uh, normalized or narrowing um, experience of education. 
No, I don't think it should be a narrowing, but I think that uh, I've come back to a phrase I mentioned, mentioned earlier, culture reflects education and education reflects culture. So the reason you have this coercive system is, is as we said earlier, because of its outdated model based on the Industrial Revolution, because at the time, the cult, that's what the economy required, that's what the culture wanted. And we built an education model on those those ideals. So listen, it's, it's I, not... I, I'd go one step further, Jim, and I'd, I'd say that the the educational model reflects a social hierarchy that was in existence long before the the industrial revolution. I mean, the the, the appearance of our schools as a kind of factory line for children, um, it looks like it looks like um, a, an industrial unit. Um, it, precisely, but the underlying social structures of hierarchy of um, the the really the exploitation and the subordination of the many um, for a uh, an elite um, social um, uh, or established uh, norm is 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 ancient, truly ancient, and. Uh, the, the hierarchy that we see in schools is it's got nothing to do with the industrial revolution in fact the, the industrial revolution and the factory is is, an, is an, just another expression of the same the same ancient social hierarchy yes i i agree you know the hierarchical nature of it has sort of been ever present i'm talking about the current existing educational model um you know, is is built on what the you know the the larger economy which serves the needs of people actually requires and it's it's both that need to change um because if you're going to school and learning about lovely stuff all day but when you go out into the world you you're being coerced then you soon learn that what you actually need to do is be coerced in fact that is kind of existent in our school model at the moment you know kids are given these wonderful messages at school you know share be nice everybody just you know get along play and then when you when you go into the real world what happens when you're 18 screw everyone over jim look two points um firstly if the world outside of schooling is awful it doesn't justify being awful to children in school um and uh the golly what was the second point um uh blah, 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 blah. i've forgotten I, I i agree i i i do agree it doesn't you know um it doesn't justify it and i don't i don't actually think we're being fully you know horrible intentionally to kids in school like i say teachers i, I meet teachers and they're nice they want to do the right thing i'm just saying that um our economic model at the moment requires a cert a certain um educational paradigm to exist underneath it otherwise you don't get the people through to the jobs that you want to sustain your economy eco economy uh, yeah again though I, I think taking arguments from from the economy and using them to uh, order schooling is 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 wrong I mean the what we should do is is take the the realities that we face and then have them sort of embedded in our knowledge, in the knowledge that we communicate to children. Um, but still, it, the whole thing needs to just be so much more vast. Um, but I, I remember the second point that I was going to make, um, and that was that you say schools teach children to be nice and they teach children to share, but listen, look, look at reality. They're just words. What, teach, what schools teach children is is uh, the messages they send are the messages that are inherent in every experience that, that a child has in school and that is that they submit to an authority they have almost no say over anything that they do they have no privacy they have no real upward um, communication channel um, they are constantly subordinated and the message given to them is that that's the way their life will be forever bang on simon Yes, well said. Yeah, I, I, I agree, and um, that's what I'm saying is that words are just that. You, you have to build. Um, you have to actually back it up with actions. And essentially, yeah, you're right. If, if they are uh, being coerced and it's hierarchical, then you, you can just say nice words. It doesn't mean anything. That's what I'm saying is. But that's what the, that's what this system is. It, it is like that, and that's why it's chicken and the egg thing. It's like, which one do you change? You, I, I firmly believe you'd need to change both um, in the long run uh, to to meet these needs that we're talking about. I think. We, yeah. Do we do we have like an issue of uh, a need of security? Because I think the 
the the whole hierarchy and everything else. I think it's not not done because of you know kind of just to um, sustain the you know status quo or anything. I think it's more of a security of doing what they've been ed- educated to thinks right, and it's more of a right or wrong and you know this clear cut thing again with the whole um what was i going to say like the, the, all this submission and rebellion and thing things comes from this whole energy towards doing things for rewards and that's what we're paying for right now we're paying for all this stuff that we're doing for rewards or a fear of punishment or if, you know fear of um being right or wrong kind of thing and we're, we're all paying for that and and when we, when our en- energy goes into that it actually contributes to the the actual problems out there and we, we're kind of denied that choice as children um and or denied that language of you know how to meet our needs or what our needs are and the fact of the matter is there's nothing in schools on specifically how we feel and you know what what needs are behind those feelings if that makes sense yeah i i I totally agree i mean i think we're in this situation where we're being so um dehumanized uh all the 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 color and the the choice and the variety is being sucked out of our lives and all we've got left is is buying stuff you know absolutely yeah i mean there's just it just <laughs> denied choice uh, every everywhere along the line oh no but you're given the choice between di- uh, like 20 different co- covers on your mobile phone guys what the hell are you talking about <laughs> lol yeah <laughs> we've touched on the subject i wanted to mention or a question i wanted to ask really is um uh where is it now um yeah would you be able to give any examples of uh, current most advanced or effective education systems that you would agree or identify with? Is there anything, any way of uh, educating people now that you would, you would, uh, you would, you know, sort of like or support? I've heard a lot about. I think Jim mentioned it uh, in his show a lot about uh, the uh, Summerhill School in UK. That sounds really good. I, I won't, uh, I won't um, forget that um, that quote about uh, creating uh, twenty uh, twenty happy uh, bin men uh, instead of uh, one frustrated politician. And I've I've heard a lot about Dalton schools, and I've heard a lot about Montessori schools. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Um, yes, uh, you're right about Summer Hill. It's um, it's a rule free school uh, in the UK. Um, and uh, they, it tried to, the, the government tried to shut it down, um, but when they did, they, they finally were, you know, forced to do an unbiased Ofsted report on it, and found that it was um, really inspiring children to learn that they enjoyed being at the school, that um, they turned up to uh, lessons even when they don't have to, and that they scored above the average GCSE results in the country, and ultimately, like you said, they're happy. They're really happy, you know, and uh, I teach a lot of children from the Rudolf Steiner School up the road, which is a similar sort of um, uh, friendlier educational model, should we say, and all the kids I teach from there will will question you if they think you're wrong, and they're happy, you know, and uh, I don't think these educational models are perfect, don't get me wrong, but they're at least, I think, stepping in the right direction, the same with Montessori, and any of those educational models I would like to send my children to, but unfortunately I don't have the purchase power. So they do exist, but um, those are the educational models I'm interested in. I, I hadn't heard of the school you, you mentioned. Um, I, I, I don't know whether that's similar, Martin. Uh, which one now? Uh, you mean Dalton? Uh, that's... Uh, I'm. I'm not quite sure about Dalton. It's uh, only one of the options I've heard about, but it's it is kind of uh, advanced uh, education type uh, for for youngsters. But I couldn't really uh, give much detail on that. It's probably better to hit Wikipedia. 
Well, that sounds interesting. Of course, we have our own sort of non-coercive educational model sitting right in front of our face called the Internet. Um, you know, like Khan Academy is very, very good if you, you know, you want to learn different things. We Technology is ultimately changing education, okay? These kids have got projector screens in their classrooms. They're, they're on the Internet. They're, they're, they're able to get access to this information, which I think is ultimately a very good thing. Unfortunately, um, with all this media stream that's coming through, it's being used to coerce them to be consumers, which is what is it's all based around. But um, I think the fact that technology is here and the information is out there means that the culture at large is is changing, and we can see that with this Occupy campaign around the world. Really, it's coming to effect because people see that other people are rising up in different countries, and that there's a problem, and people are uh, you know have this access to information and. I think ultimately the internet is help, is helping in such a huge way towards the I think the goals that we're all talking about here. Um, so so uh, yes, that's that's another educational model that isn't seen as a school, but essentially that's kind of what it is. I uh, just want to back that up. I mean, I think the internet has has, has been the most amazing thing uh, for for education. And uh, when I was developing my own thoughts um, about the education problem, really the the, the internet uh, stood out uh, foremost for me. Um, so the question was really how can we get the, the, the power of um, the internet into the classroom? Um, you know, it's, it, we've always had libraries and you know, a, a lot of <laughs> um, worthy minds throughout the ages have, all, have, have said again and again, listen, school is not the place for an education. If you want an education, go to the library. Um, so uh, the internet is just the, the most incredible update on, on libraries that we've, we've had. Um, however, we're left with the, the, the problem that we've, we've, we've had uh, all through the, the, the history of schooling, and that is that children are going to spend six hours a day, um, almost every day of the week, for their entire childhood. And it's what happens in the school, in the classroom, that matters. It's not good enough to say, um, to children that they should suffer for all of that time and then uh, must go off and source themselves a proper education in their own time, which is recreational time for themselves, their friends and their families. Yes. I and, and, and so, sorry, just on, on that same note, you know, the imposition of, of homework given to children, not to meet learning needs, but simply um, to be just in and of itself, to give homework for the sake of giving homework, uh, to intrude on, on family life like that as a matter of routine, uh, asking, in effect, asking children to put a second shift in at home, I think it's just shocking. Wow, that's such a great point. I'm reading one of Alfie Cohn's books, um, I can't, uh, the, the Homework Myth. I, I'm not fully through it yet, but you know he's already touching on many of the points you just raised. It's kind of like, uh, we, we don't trust you to um, talk to your children in a constructive manner. We just, you know, uh, we, we're going to have to set more home, uh, you know, work at home so that the work never ends. And it's it's just just to kind of just to kind of let them know that even when school's out, it's never really out. Even when work's out, it's never really out. It's like 1984. Precisely, and, and Alfie Cohn is an inspiration for for anyone that hasn't um, heard of him or read his books. Um, yeah, highly recommended. Real inspiration. Just want to um, add to this this question that was raised. Um, the whole internet revolution, so to speak, is kind of well. It's what it's what's. I would say contributed to getting us to where we are today so that's why I say a big thanks to everyone and everything that's gotten me where I am today because without all these people um, sharing the info and tools that they've come across I wouldn't be speaking about this I'd probably just be you know this whole consumer product of the environment conditioned by culture to be just a fuckwit I suppose or whatever you want to call it um, it's more of you know I just I just want to say I just want to say it's so important now that we just share all the info and tools of becoming well of how to meet our needs basically and what 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 I was just saying before about knowing what our needs are and how to meet them um, is what's going to give us a future and that's all that that I can really say and I just want to just want to say that just want to say again that you know sharing is the way forward really it's um 
trying to think of a list of like all the people that have gotten me to where I am now um, and towards looking at, at making a better future for everyone a better future is you know Jack Fresco set the ball rolling for me from the Venus Project.com um, there's Jesse Canon from lose the back pain.com all these people um, can have, have kind of had influence on me to change myself I mean I don't I don't think there is such a thing as changing other people I think it's more to do with influence of you know people living better lives and us kind of taking a piece of that and you know just a couple more people uh there's michael einstein from the fruitarian.com and um there's marshall rosenberg as i mentioned before from nonviolent communication um just really helped me to get get me to where i am today so i just want to say a big thanks to them and i'm not not trying to push my website here or you know any any other websites that I've been involved with but just thanks to everyone I'll push my website it's actiononeducation.org yeah. oh well I may as well chime in uh, tzmeducation.org um, something that was mentioned at the beginning of the show as well guys is that we have to build a little bit of a web with these things and interact them they're obviously hugely closely related and um, I'll certainly feature your sites on my site and um, and uh, start building this holographic web uh, so so that the um, the consciousness shift that we need can ultimately take place. Absolutely. Okay, guys, uh, this was great. Um, I think uh, we are kind of getting to a point when uh, we might as well ask our guests if they want to add anything and then uh, go to finish. Um, we uh, might want to do another show uh, next time uh, in the future if we if we get any questions from uh, from the listeners from uh, ZM Global. I'll uh, set up uh, an email address where the people will be able to, uh, to post their questions if you guys would uh, would agree to answer them or uh, discuss them. And uh, that's it from me. Um, our guest, do you have anything to say? I would just like to say one thing. We're all, all familiar with the phrase, be the light of change that you wish to see in the world. And I think that people respond to physical interaction and, um, and, and passion rather well. If you're out doing a stool or you can get into schools and talk to kids or just, you know, actually be in the physically sort of, um, for, you know, uh, approaching people and um, be seen to be actually taking physical action on the streets. Um, that is a wonderful thing to do alongside, you know, any inter internet activism you may do. But um, I, I passionately believe, you know, if you are a member of this movement, then whatever, you know, however much you can manage in your life, uh, you should, you know, try to get out there. If you really believe in this, try, do try to get out there, folks, and make the difference you want to see. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Lee. Thank you, Simon. Uh, thank you, our listeners. And um, this uh, show, uh, because of its length, will probably be cut half and uploaded as two different shows, part one and part two. Uh, we will be, uh, we might be doing another show uh, if uh, there will be, uh, if there will be questions for our panel. So uh, thank you uh, all very much for coming in and listening and participating and have a good life. Yeah, I just want to quickly say, everyone listening to this, um, this is LeeHamster.com, presenting EducateHQ.com. Subscribe, share, comment, rate, or we're not going to have a future. Good show. Thanks very much for having me on today, guys. I really appreciate it. Yes, same for me, guys. Thanks so much.